This is Texas Living with Hillary Kennedy and Kimberly Whitman. Critterman is back with us today, and we're looking forward to Dave Clevin introducing us to some interesting friends of his. We're going to get to see a ring-tailed lemur. Um, his wife, Susan, has also joined us. And we're going to start off with a Patagonian KV. That's correct. And All we're right. actually going to hand you the bottle here while we talk about him and let you feed Hi. him there. Just kind of put it right in front of him. He'll find Hi. it. Uh, Susan Hi. is the director of the Frank Buck Zoo, and every once in a while, um, she has a lot of things she has to do in her job. Uh, one of them is sometimes to uh, hand, uh, raise and take care of some babies that need a little help. Oh. And so this is a uh, Patagonian cavey from basically the deserts of South America. A lot of people think of the Amazon when they think of South America, mm -hmm. but there's a also deserts down there. And this animal looks like a cross between a hare and an antelope, doesn't it? It really does. A very unusual animal. But uh, these animals live a very unique life because the desert habitat is so hard, they have, to, uh, they have to have a lot of different strategies. One of them is that they choose one mate for life, and so they always have the, the, each other to depend on to look out for danger. I love that. Well, and I, so we talked before the show about that because I said, you know, why is it that some animals mate for life and some don't? You said it all just depends on sort of the survival. The survival. Well, right. As a matter of fact, you know, sometimes uh, it's almost like from the movie Twilight, the male will imprint on a female when she's very young, when she's still nursing from the mother. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is that they'll have the protection from each other. The females have to spend a lot more time in search of food. And so the males, when they have their free time, they can look out for danger. So it benefits the male and the female to have this relationship throughout their whole life. I love that. Yeah. So the kitty kind of looks like a bunny. Does it hop like a bunny? You know, it actually, the, way, re, the w reason I said it has uh, kind of legs more like an antelope is it actually kind of prongs like an antelope does. I don't know if you've seen pronghorn mm -hmm. here in Texas, but that's how they kind of like bounce off four legs, and that's exactly how these guys do it. And what's funny is the animal that we're going to meet next has a very different mode of, uh, of uh, getting around from one place to another there. Yeah, and we're going to, I think, bring him out here next. He says, I'm not finished. Yes, he's not finished there. <laughs> not finished. Probably want to get, we, we, we definitely want to get to the star of the segment, we that's do. for sure. So we don't want to take too long. Um, you know, the KV the lives in the desert, and it's not an easy place to live. You wouldn't think that very many animals could live out there. But right. the amazing thing is some animals are adapted for getting all of their water just from their environment. This guy right here is an African leopard tortoise. Now he's not a full grown one. He's actually fairly young still. He's uh, about 22 years old. Oh, wow. Now, when I said young, of course, 22 was not the number you were expecting. No. These, these guys can live 100 to 200 years. 200 years? 200 years. years. And uh, I guess he didn't see the sweet potato way down there. Uh, that is one of his favorite foods. These guys can eat cactus, which is one of the reasons they can live and survive in the desert. And there he goes. Wow. Look at See, it's really amazing to watch these guys. They can get all, almost all the water they need just from the food that they eat. You're kidding me. Well, he looks very prehistoric. But, yeah, and you, you know, can feel a shell. And notice how he moved when I touched his shell there. That shell is part of his body, so he can feel even gentle pressures on his shell. That way, if a predator sneaks up even from behind, they can he sense knows it. that it's there. That's exactly right. How interesting. And so you said they, they eat cactus, they eat sweet potatoes, just kind of soft, fleshy fruits and... Grasses, uh, but cactus, they can eat it because they have that beak like a bird to tear off a chunk of cactus, mm -hmm. hard bones in his mouth to smash the spines of the cactus there. And so he can eat the cactus leaf for the food, and then of course the water's inside. Yeah. Now, do you think that tortoises in general make good pets? Obviously not maybe a guy like this, but... You know, they do sell some tortoises as uh, pets at the pet store. Uh, what I always tell people is make sure you do your homework, do your research. Mm -hmm. um, this would not be a good... Uh, a pet for most people because a leopard tortoise can weigh up to 100 pounds. Ooh, but the no ones thanks. they sell at the pet store <laughs> that weigh about, you know, 5 to 10 pounds, uh, Russian tortoises and things like that, right. you still have to keep in mind that they might outlive you. So you better have a family <laughs> plan for these guys. So That's here, true. we're going to actually, I'm going to bring uh, to Chewy off here and Susan's going to come in and she's actually going to tell you about Great. Zika. Wonderful. So Zika is a Swahili word that actually means ghost or spirit. Uh -huh. And on the island of Madagascar, where these animals are found, and y'all saw them in the teaser, um, the, it, these guys are actually considered endangered. Oh, wow. So when most people see this animal, they've become very popular over the last few years mm -hmm. because of movies like Madagascar. Right. So most people think of, I like to move it, move, move it. it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but the, it is the ring-tailed lemur, and um, King Julian is what people think of. When they see Well, they're adorable, but they, they can be very feisty, is that right? Well, they are primates, and um, they're very primitive, uh, what they're called prosimians, and they do live in large family groups, and they're very territorial. They're very protective over their family. Okay. So that's why 
that works out well for them because when you live in a really large group and another troop comes along and tries to take over your territory where your food is, mm -hmm. you want to have a good defense. Well, and so what kind of food? It looks like he's eating some grapes. What kind of foods do, do the lemurs normally eat? He, he, yeah, he, they actually are omnivores because they're primates, so they eat all sorts of different types of things. Um, but he really does like sweet fruits and so forth. It's kind of like candy to them, mm -hmm. so it's a nice treat. Now, lemurs don't mate for life, do they? Um, they actually are, are a little bit more mm, promiscuous. Okay. <laughs> I guess a lot of variety. <laughs> That's, that, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, but but it, it really depends on what subspecies we're talking about. The ringtail lemurs, um, they, they get along quite well in large groups, we'll just say. Very nice. Well, and so can he hang by his tail? He cannot. That's a great okay. question. The reason why they're called a ringtail lemur is the rings on the tail are very much like stripes on a zebra. Mm -hmm. They're individual to that animal. And when these animals are on the ground in the high grasses and so forth, they'll sort of wave that tail around. Mm -hmm. And the tail actually, from a long distance, um, the other troop members can tell exactly who it is just by seeing the pattern on the tail. Oh, wow. Kind of crazy. So it really is identifying. It's almost like wearing a name tag. It is. It is. Exactly. <laughs> they also have scent glands that are on their wrists. Uh -huh. and. Um, they don't want to get in one-on-one -on -one combat with another troop mm -hmm. if a troop moves into the area, so they do what we call stink fights. So what they'll do is they'll actually stimulate that gland on their wrist, they'll kind of get like a little ball of scent, and then they'll kind of wind up and throw it at the other troop. Really? Kind yeah. of like what little boys do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. And it actually works really well because um, they really don't want to engage in, in actual combat because then somebody might get hurt. Don't like conflict. Well, thank mm -hmm. you for bringing these neat animals to us today, you guys. We really appreciate it. This was fun. And if you'd like more details about Critter Man uh, and Susan's appearances, log on to CritterMan.com for more information.